this is a bit like uh, a presentation about uh, JavaScript in 2019, which uh, which I presented like on Meetup uh, last week. So uh, I did not practice this in English. I did it in Serbian, but like all the slides and everything, it's in English. So forgive me for that if I like uh, get confused. Uh, so basically, uh, let me introduce myself again. So I'm uh, uh, working in software development for the last seven years. I use different technologies. Uh, in last two or three years, I'm working mostly with JavaScript and my focus is React and React Native. And I'm also uh, active speaker at local um, meetups and uh, community events. And I'm also teaching programming in um, the Belgrade Institute of Technology. So uh, currently I'm working uh, as independent te uh, tech consultant for uh, different companies, uh, companies in Serbia and abroad. So this is a bit boring stuff about me. And uh, if you want to ask me something, you can do uh, that on Twitter, like Demi on uh, Twitter, or uh, for this talk, you can use uh, Slido and Armada.js hashtag uh, to ask questions about this lecture. Okay. Uh, so oh, let's start. So basically, uh, it's a really catchy title like JavaScript, ECMAScript 2019, a new edition of ECMAScript standard. And but actually, there are not that much features as it was in ECMAScript 6. So this is just some additions and fixes that they did uh, in um, in the latest version, and I just wanted to to uh, like show you what's that new that you can use and maybe uh, some stuff that you uh, made custom uh, functions or prototypes that you used in your code now you have natively supported in in ECMA standard. So uh, b before we start doing that, uh, I wanted to uh, if you don't know, I wanted to introduce you like to the uh, proposal process, uh, how something enters into JavaScript or ECMAScript standard. So JavaScript, it's like combination, It's JavaScript, it's uh, always environment dependent language. So it depends on some environment, for example, on front end that's browser, on back end that's node. So basically, uh, and uh, JavaScript, like JavaScript, it's based, uh, uh, it's made like of three parts. Uh, you have ECMAScript, which is co core of the language, like standard, uh, like basic fun functionalities. You have uh, DOM, which is a br uh, document object model implementation in browser. And you have BOM also, which is browser object model in browser. So that three parts are like JavaScript on the in the browser environment. So for example, if you want to add something in uh, ECMAScript standard, you have to go to the uh, proposal process. All th the process starts with uh, champions, folks who, who want to add something in, in the language. And that folks usually draft a proposal that want to uh, to add something to language. So this is this proposal is usually like really boring uh, if you if you try to read it. And it's not like uh, it's a really technical uh, in technical stuff. So you need to read a lot, uh, a lot of documentations. Like go back and f forward. Like okay, this stuff that I read now, I don't understand. Let's go back in the beginning and read. Wha why is this Im really important to add and stuff like that? And there is not like uh, sometimes people make presentations and stuff to explain like when they draft proposal. But okay. And that proposal has to go to, uh, their way to, through five stages. Stage zero is just an idea, which is looking initial feedback from the community. So basically, when you have idea, you want to add something like new method to, to ECMAScript uh, standard. You need to draft a proposal, write a technical documa to documentation, and ask for initial feedback from the community. After that, uh, when that when that's uh, like you have enough uh, vote ups for that, you get the uh, basic uh, like draft of the API and you ha you get assigned 
uh, a champion, people who are working on a JavaScript language who want to ma make that uh, further in the development. Okay. So next stage, it's uh, stage two, which is draft, which is more formalized spec. Uh, yeah, and likely it has a bubble plugin so that you can use it in uh, in your code and do uh, transpiling to to uh, to have support in the browser. When it goes after stage two to stage three, it's basically done. It's just some fixing. Uh, it needs to have uh, uh, mo more uh, more complete like documentation and everything. And this is the part where you can get f feedback from real uh, users. So people are usually, here you have already um, a bubble plugin and you can use that in production and people are actually, there are teams and people who are using uh, features which are in stage three. In stage four, uh, this, your proposal, it's actually done, uh, it's ready for acceptance, it's uh, ECMAScript standard and it's uh, just the matter of time when it will be, uh, in which version will be released. So uh, you can start using features, uh, new features in, uh, in ECMAScript, like just from uh, version two, when, when they get, uh, get a bubble plugin to, uh, so you can transpile your code. But to play safe, you should use proposals like in stage three or four. When they are in stage three or four, they are fi uh, finalized. It's likely that a uh, API won't change. In uh, stage two, API still can change because it's still draft. And uh, and in stage two, it's probably it's good shape, but probably something might change if they discover that something it's not a really good format. So uh, regarding Chrome and these new features in, in browser, uh, you can use them natively without any plugin, without anything from version 72. So basically uh, Chrome, it's uh, evolving really fast and it's adding new features all the time. Basically all the features that we um, uh, mentioned here today, they are already implemented in Chrome and we will take, uh, take a look some of them. So let's start easy, uh, some simple stuff. So we got uh, like two, two string methods, which are uh, trim start and trim end. We actually had this in uh, JavaScript earlier. There was like trim right and trim left, which was not like uh, developer fri friendly. If you are coming from some other languages, you wanted to stream space from the start and the end of the string, so they just uh, they they kept this trim right and trim left, and they added two new methods, trim start and trim end. So if you want to use that in a uh, uh, new browser, you can. Uh, if you use this one, you can now use trim start and trim end uh, as a new part. So and it's right now it's supported only in Chrome. Fully supported in Chrome from version 74 or 72 also, but. Here is just li uh, latest uh, five versions. Uh, it's partially supported in uh, Firefox, in Edge not supported yet. Uh, actually, this is unknown. Uh, in Internet Explorer, it's not supported. And for Safari in iOS, it's uh, not known. So uh, this graph, it's really from a really cool site, which is called Can I Use? So if you like type trim start, start and you can see all the versions where it's supported and where it's not okay this change it I copied the code from here yeah so basically okay so yeah here you can you can check um, where where it's supported. I don't know why this, I copied th that slide from. Okay, well, so <laughs> let's uh, let's take a look at this. So basically it's supported in version 77 and then uh, from 78, it, it's not completely supported, it's partially supported. But uh, if you are using um, 
bubble plugins and you have uh, your setup configured to use bubble you don't have to worry about that so if you're using proper stage for for bubble uh, you don't have to that look that much for the support you just need to configure your your uh, build environment to to support this okay so in the latest version we got uh, objects from entries uh, in version 2017, uh, we, we got object entries, which, which was a really good feature uh, to convert uh, objects into array so that we can apply all of these cool methods like map, filter, reduce, and stuff like that, so that we can filter uh, our objects as, as arrays. But to revert that process in, uh, in uh, backwards, you had to do some uh, manual stuff, writing some for loops and stuff like that. So they added new uh, object from entries, which m uh, just do a revert process from, uh, from the previous one. Yep, so this is code for strings. and uh, objects so here we have students when we uh, add student entries we get something like uh, this okay so we get array of arrays and each student it's a uh, like key value it's transformed to uh, to uh, array properties array elements and uh, to do like the revert process we had to, uh, w and, and now when we have array, we can do like filtering, like over uh, over 21 and older and stuff like that. To do revert process, we had to do something like this, like to write, write for, lo for loop and add that pro uh, properties and values inside the object. In 2019, in ECMAScript 10 standard, we can use that student entries that we just converted here and put them back inside the normal structure. So here is only one problem, which is really important to note, uh, and that's that array and ob objects are uh, different structures for a reason. So basically, when you have arrays uh, in, uh, in objects, you cannot have two properties with the, the same name. In arrays, in this structure of the array, array of arrays, which each array, it's which element array, it's a new array with two elements like key value. Uh, it might happen that you have like two two uh, same uh, names, and because there are just strings. Here. So let me run this again. So here, these are just strings. So for example, if I have this one here. What will will happen if I use from entries? Yeah, he will replace it, b and only the last value will preserve it, which might cause some data lost. That data uh, lost. So uh, we need to be uh, uh, so we need to be really careful uh, uh, with that one. It's really handy. It's quick way to transform to entries and from entries, but you need to be careful when using it because it will override the previous value if there is the same value. If, ver if there is a uh, uh, value in the uh, like array which, which has the same uh, name as the previous one. So also, let's check again. Maybe something changed. So from entries. Okay, so from entries, uh, it's almost fully su it's fully supported in Firefox, Chrome, Safari, uh, on iOS, Safari, Chrome for Android, uh, in Edge, it's not supported still, and in Internet Explorer, it's not probably it will be not, but if you are again using appropriate uh, Bubble plugin uh, for appropriate stage in JavaScript. Uh, Everything will be transpiled to down to probably like to ECMAScript 5, so you don't have to worry because ECMAScript 5 it's supported uh, in all browsers. Okay, so we also got 
looking at two two new uh, uh, methods on array prototype, which are flat and flat map. And uh, multidimensional arrays are pretty common da data structures in in JavaScript, and uh, usually to make some uh, multidimensional arrays to to uh, to save some data to d handle some forms and stuff like that. So ability to flatter an array it was really necessary in in JavaScript, and it was it was always possible, but not really like handy like out of the box. Uh, usually people use the law dash or underscore or some library that has support for flat maps and uh, right now they decided to add it to uh, to Java uh, to array uh, prototype and it takes optional argument of depth of their array so basically uh, and if that uh, depth it's not provided the default uh, value it's uh, one so the function is not greedy it doesn't go like to infinity just uh, uses one depth to 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 flatter so i have an example for that as well it's this one so i have array of arrays which has inside another array so if i call uh, like this course students and call flat and I execute that. Oh, let me just clear this console again. So, and I execute that. I see that the the, the first level of array it's flattened. So all, all all the arrays are now inside the first array, and usually, uh, and this one because this this array it's part of the first element in this array, so it's not flattened because the de depth of the array it's one. Okay. So if I want to to flatten like to the all levels of the array until it's possible, what do you think how I can do that? What should I pass as a parameter here? Infinity, yeah. <laughs> there is infinity number in in JavaScript. So if I pass infinity, it will uh, flatten these arrays through infinity. So this one is the first one, and this one is the second one. So all fra flattened. Don't mind the the formatting of display because this is like some plugin that I'm using to to run the code. So all all, all of the these are now flattened inside array. Okay. So flattering it's okay, but if we need to uh, like add new element to array. And also flatten that that element and uh, the 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 whole array. We can do that uh, like by combining map and flat with no arguments and stuff like that. But also JavaScript like community and ECMAScript decided to add flat map, which which is combination of flat and the map. So like this so we can first map that add new element and each element increase by, by something so we can do that or we can use the same thing with flat map so here we have two methods and here we have only one to like add element and flatter the array okay And support, let's check that again on this flat map. Flat and flat map, I will apply these filters. So, as we can see, they're fully supported in Firefox and Chrome, Safari for mobile and iOS Safari and Chrome for Android from version like here 76, here 72 and something, 74 for sure and uh, Firefox fully supported and Edge in version 76. Okay, Promise. What was the biggest like feature in Promises that to handle Promises in, in JavaScript like in the last few years? 
do you know? What what's the nicest thing about promises that happened like in new ECMAS standard, like ECMAScript six and seven and what? Do you know? Async await? Yeah. Like async await to handle promises and it was it's for in my opinion it's like the biggest thing uh, that that and really nice thing uh, addition to ECMAScript standard so that we can handle promises. Uh, in uh, ECMAScript uh, 10, we don't have that something really spectacular. We have just two two method new two new methods, which are static methods on promise object. Uh, they are called all settled and any, and uh, all settle method takes array of promises and resolves once all of the promises have either resolved or rejected. So promise returned by all settled uh, does not require catch block bec because always will always resolve. What does that mean? It will does not need uh, catch because then will always receive uh, some values and that values will be uh, objects which which has two two properties like status and value of each promise inside uh, which was passed to that method. So let's take a look. So promises. So it looks like this. I will copy this inside the browser because uh, I'm here running on Node and Node is still not supporting this. So I will run that in browser here and we will see. So what I'm doing, I'm creating three promises uh, which two of them are resolved and third is rejected and all will be re uh, resolved uh, after like will execute, like finish uh, after uh, two seconds. So no. Oh, I need to remove this. This one is for later. So wait a bit and we get three promises. Uh, then block executed. I, it, can, uh, it cannot go to, uh, to catch uh, callback. And each of them has status which can be fulfilled or rejected. And it has value which is resolved for that promise. Okay, so we always get into catch block and we get status so that we can check if it's resolved, rejected, if something that you, you do. Also, now we can like transform uh, this like f with object entries and stuff like that and do like additional uh, formatting, but that's something that you, you can do depending on your use case. Uh, promise any method is similar to promise rate method, but uh, the promises returned by by this method does not execute the catch block as soon as the promises get rejected. So in race method we get the first promise uh, resolved but uh, as soon as catch uh, as some promise is rejected uh, race method will throw a catch block. In any that will not happen. Any waits until any of the promises resolved. So if the, the promise that throws uh, th that's rejected before some resolved promises. Like we have first, first we have five promises, and first is rejected. Any will wait until the first is resolved and then return the callback. Okay, and throw a catch. So let's try it. So and also, if none of the promises is resolved, catch block will be get executed. So let's try that in the browser. Uh, I will remove all of this and put here any. Oh, I cannot use P because I can use P any. What? Let's see if it's supported in my version. Any, uh, but promise that we mm, I will see promise. Promises finally. Mm, 
No. Well, I don't know actually about this one, but it should work like this. Here. But I think it's a static method. No, no, I think it's a, the static method. Let's try any. So yeah, this is when you improvise stuff. Uh, promises. Let's see resources here. Let's try all settled. Okay. Promises, finally. Let's try on prototype. Or let's try Google. Uh, promise uh, and uh, MDN. Maybe it's still. Maybe they removed it. Maybe. Promise race. What? Ah, uh, it's still maybe in stage two. Okay, so maybe so, uh, some API changed. Okay, so this one, it's still not uh, like supported in the browser, but it's in stage two. Okay, sorry, that was my bad. Because I, uh, when I checked this, it somehow, somehow worked. Okay, but probably uh, since it's, it's in stage two, it will uh, be added, but we need to wait for that. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, next thing that uh, we need to uh, to do it's uh, optional uh, that we have in ECMAScript uh, uh, 10 it's optional catch binding so basically uh, it's like optional argument in, in catch block since we are now writing a lot of trio catch block because uh, blocks because of um, uh, async await syntax we 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 don't have to to do uh, if we don't want to use argument in catch or we just need to do we know what's what we are throwing here what's happening we can use catch without um, a parameter so this one it's uh, catch here so this was earlier how it was done so if this is we will get error here which we don't have to use so what I usually did I usually put like this because we needed to add that argument but right now that's like optional and you don't have to add new parameter here to catch you can use catch without parameter which makes just code a little bit nicer and you don't create like unused uh, unused variables uh, also new addition in um, uh, let's check uh, support for this sketch. Catch. Optional catch binding, so it's supported in most of the browser except Edge, and it's uh, ready to re to use. And uh, global this, so we also have the famous this which depends on the context where it's accessed uh, and uh, it's kind of tricky to get global this value uh, 
uh, as we can u not use only this keyword everywhere. For example, in constructors, we, we don't we we cannot use like global this uh, in constructors because that this will be referenced to the to the object. So uh, you should you have to use like window dot this or something like that. But uh, in addition. Uh, 10 of uh, JavaScript, you get global this value. So here, if we go and we go, we say. So if we get this, this is okay. But we also have global this, which is like just a nicer syntax to access this. And let's check the uh, support for that. So global this it's supported in uh, most modern browsers, like the most popular one at least. Uh, Firefox from Safari, iOS Safari from 12.3 version, and it's not supported in in Edge yet and in Internet Explorer. Uh, yeah, so I, I know teams and I worked on projects where people do some kind of wrapper around this so that they, they can always use like global this and stuff like that and now they have that uh, inside the uh, lang language uh, next thing it's private class fields so as we know in javascript we don't have uh, uh, public private and protected uh, prop uh, like property modifiers and all properties in uh, in object are def uh, default by public so this is like something confusing for people coming from uh, an, uh, another language. And in the latest version of uh, JavaScript, this was introduced. Uh, I think it's still in stage two or three. Uh, we, we can check later. So to define the, uh, a private property inside the, in the class, we use prefix uh, hash. So basically, if you try to access the private property, you will get some a syntax error, un, uh, undefined private field, uh, and it will look like something like this. So we have class, uh, we have private property sound, and like we uh, we create function uh, method inside that class that can access that property with this syntax. So just add hash, and it will be. Uh, will be considered private. So this is only supported now in stage three and it's only supported in Chrome fully. In other bar browsers, it's still not uh, not implemented. Uh, I have some code here. Uh, do you see? Class, yeah. So it looks like this. Also, if you didn't know, in JavaScript now supports the field uh, uh, class declarations like this inside the field, inside inside the class. Uh, you don't have to do them only in constructor. You can do do them in inside the class. Uh, also, getters and setters are also there for a long time, but no one used them enough. Uh, so basically, if we copy this everything inside the browser, this one. Uh, okay. What kind of items? Uh, this is example, this was example, I don't remember. Let's try again in the new tab. What items uh, in the constructor? Sorry about that. I was showing something. Okay, doggy. New tab. Console. Okay, now we we can do that, but if we try. Doggy dot sound. 
sound, just sound. Okay, sound. We we get undefined, uh, or we should get error because this is uh, still in version uh, in stage three, so something might change. And also uh, here uh, in the showcase, I just remember that I'm using a Canary uh, version of Chrome, so maybe some stuff it's not working right there as it should be, as it's written in docu documentation. So another new things that are added. Uh, so these are like the the, bi the bigger things. Another new things that are added are numeric sep separators. So for example, if you need to write a really big numbers like million and stuff, you can do like this now. Okay. Million, billion, and stuff like that. So you can use underscore to separate numbers. It's just for your r reading convenience. Uh, it will transform it to, to a number. Another thing, it's a uh, well-formatted uh, JSON stringify. JSON stringify had some problems. If you wanted to to save and like uh, stringify and parse uh, Unicode uh, strings, so if you wanted to save that and then parse back, you get the, the square, you know, and it's uh, it was not working properly. Now it's that fixed. I think also it's preserving uh, white spaces, stuff like that. It was uh, it had some problem with that also. So another thing, there are some stability improvements uh, with sort. Uh, there is a really big discussion which I did not write there about the sort. What's what was the problem with that? Uh, I'm actually not using this sort because sort it's using in in, s in place, so uh, it mutates the original array. So I'm usually just copying some stuff and and doing some transformations on that that copy. So this sort uh, um, I'm, I'm actually avoiding to to use. Uh, uh, now there's some stability improvement for for that. Uh, I don't know exactly what I uh, I know that. Uh, something regarding sorting objects, and you try to use sort without a callback. Uh, it use default uh, uh, ASCII or Unicode uh, to sort it, but when you pass the object, I, it had some strange algorithm. Now it's that that's fixed, and sorting like in a better way. Uh, also, uh, function prototype to string method, uh, it now gets the fully formatted uh, function, preserving white space and stuff like that. Uh, so it's just a small improvement, and if you're using uh, regular expressions, they said I, uh, JavaScript did not have look behind. I never used that one, I, I don't know, I, I'm not a regular expression guy, so I don't know about that, but um, now they say that's uh, supported also in JavaScript. So demo, what's next? Next big thing that's like also in stage two or three, it's like optional chaining in JavaScript where you have like optional parameters like in TypeScript if you're using, I don't know how, it, I, I didn't have time to take a look how it's going to be implemented in JavaScript, but that's some, uh, some next thing that, and a big topic that should be uh, like discussed uh, and um, it will be introduced in ECMAScript standard. So yeah, that's it. Uh, questions? Let's see on Slido. Do you want to read or? Uh, yeah, we have a few questions. Okay. Uh, do you think observables should be part of JavaScript API and be available out of the box, same as promises, and why? Uh, I don't think that observables should be like part of uh, JavaScript. Uh, I think that JavaScript should stay like, uh, it, it's my personal opinion again, uh, because uh, uh, like observables and stuff like that, I think it should be uh, something that you have like option option to use, not like in Angular like where you have like Eric's and stuff that you have to use it if you want to use framework. I work mostly with React, so I li really like React and stuff that they let you to use whatever you want. So yeah, basically that my opinion, it should not be included in standard, but I don't know. 
maybe some more experienced people here have different opinion and I'm always willing to listen that so yep okay and any last minute su suggestions what a any last minute suggestions for for using JavaScript 20 in 2019 no that that's that's basically you just um, yeah, you just use uh, use bubble and don't worry about the, the, the compatibility and stuff like that. So you always get transpiled to to uh, yeah, uh, ECMAScript five, which is supported widely, and you're good to go. You can use you can join really cool uh, n and nice syntax, and then uh, you don't have to worry that much about compatibility. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you.